Hello, Jack and Jills! I'm Epic Botch, and welcome to episode 5 of Braid. Today we'll hop into world 6. Hesitance. Perhaps in a perfect world, the ring would be a symbol of happiness. It's a sign of ceaseless devotion. Even if he will never find the princess, he will always be trying. He still will wear the ring. But the ring makes its presence known. It shines out to others like a beacon of warning. It makes people slow to approach. Suspicion. Distressed. Interactions are torpedoed before Tim can open his mouth. In time, he learns to deal with others carefully. He matches their hesitant pace, tracing a soft path through their defenses. But this exhausts him, and it only works to a limited degree. It doesn't get him what he needs. Tim begins to hide the ring in his pocket, but he can hardly bear it. Too long tucked away, that part of him might suffocate. World 6, we have yet another ability. Like the story talked about, we have a, pot, a ring that we hide in our pocket. The closer we get to it, the slower things are. I think that World 6, the pit, question mark, is the first, the only pit in which we don't get a puzzle piece. Alright, with this puzzle, as you see, you had to put the ring right next to the door in order to slow the platform down enough for us to get there in time. Since this time the key is not irreversible, that's the only way we can get this puzzle piece. We'll pick it up. And it's a little bit hard to tell, but in that, in the background with the snowflakes falling, when you put the ring down, the snowflakes fall slower towards it. Whereas the ones further away from it are going kind of at the same pace. Maybe a little bit slower. So, and talking about the background specifically, so we, again we have the snowflakes in this world like we did in World 4, but we're starting to see the fantasy, the elements of World 2 and World 3, which is in the rolling meadows, the nice music in the background, kind of mixed with the just disjointedness of what we were getting in World 5. So, I just... It's been fun to play the worlds in a different order than I normally would, because I got to see this connection between World 4 and World 6, and World 5 and World 6, and World 3 and World 5. And I appreciated just the different outlook that it's given me. All right, so I did leave the ring in the last door, but we still have it in this one. So don't ever worry about going back and getting it. We're gonna get that puzzle piece on top of, that's right, across the platform. And um, we had to use these monsters in order to make the jump. I like to put the ring right down between the, uh, the hat and the astronaut. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Let's see if I can make that bounce a little bit better. Whoop! Completely overshot it. You do have to jump on. Sorry, you do have to jump on two of the monsters. The first one and the third one. Um, don't try. Oh, shoot! I am messing this up. Don't worry about trying to get the second one. It just messes up. Messes you up. There we go. Let's see if that's that's not high enough. Why am I having issues with this right now? Usually I don't. I'm not sure what's going on here. I suppose I have to have at least one puzzle where I just can't get my timing right. There we go. I'm not really sure what I was doing wrong that first time. <laughs> so let's pick up the ring and we're gonna go ahead and aim for this next puzzle piece, which is all the way across here. 
I did this wrong too. I like to grab this key first. We briefly saw it on screen before going and getting the puzzle piece, just for efficiency's sake. Now that we have it, we'll go ahead and put the ring right here. I'm gonna wait for a monster to jump down so that we can jump on him and get this key. This puzzle piece, I am getting all my words mixed up today. Grab it. Oh, that was too soon. We now need one of these monsters down below us. It'll make sense in just a moment. Alright, apparently just need to let this run its course a little bit. Perfect, there we go. Now we're gonna follow this small star all the way across. Bounce on him and get on top of this cannon. This is the only place that you can put this key. Oh my goodness, this the ring in order to get this puzzle piece. It has probably taken me a couple hours just to figure out how to do this, to get this puzzle solved. If you put the ring anywhere other than right on top of the cannon and right next to the fuse, you won't have time to traverse the speed to the space to come back across. Here we go. Oh, and the music slows down too when we have the ring out. So everything like the opening the exposition was talking about, everything's kind of affected by the ring being out. Including the music, the backgrounds. Oh. Can't do that apparently. Every the inanimate objects, the monsters, all that sort of thing. There we go. I'm gonna let we're just gonna make sure that the top the platform going across makes it all gets out a little bit. There we go. So we have seen this particular puzzle before. However, it's now we have the different twist. And you know, some people might say that that's really lazy game design because they're not come you know, they didn't come up with a different puzzle. But it, in a lot of ways it is a different puzzle because you have to think about it in a different way than you did before just with the new mechanic, and that's what I like about Braid. Um, and being able to see, there's a lot of things I like about Braid, but uh, being able to see, why am I having problems with this jump? It's not that hard. <laughs> being able to see puzzles and doing them differently because of a different ability. I just think it adds a nice twist to it. In a different perspective, if you want to think about it that way. Alright, let's pick up the ring. Alright, the second half to this. Lo and behold, we have seen this kind of thing. And we're gonna... But instead of the claws being immune to... Or being irreversible, it's the monsters. Alright. Now we're gonna move off screen to that first claw is off screen. I think I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think when it's off screen, your ring doesn't affect it. Or maybe or at least it doesn't affect it as much. So that's why now I'm gonna oops, gotta have it get give it enough space to come down. Oh, I messed up because I reversed time, that's why. That was really, really dumb of me. Here we go. Just making sure that they're still coming across. Here we go. I'm pretty sure that if it's not on the screen, the ring doesn't affect it. I could be wrong. It could be very minimal. And just the times that I've done it before, I've had really good luck with it. If you want to find a different way, go for it. I just think that this tech 
this happens to be the best way for me. Alright, that should do it. Now we should have an unlimited stream of monsters, which you think would be a good thing, but too many is obnoxious. So I just like to reverse time maybe a little bit. See, that's what I'm talking about. Let's see if I can do this without messing up too badly, because... Whew! Why'd I put the ring down? There we go! It is nice to have the unlimited monsters coming across, but too many and you can't get the puzzle piece. Oop. Let's go! Elevator action! Oh, now would actually be a really good time to talk about um, the dinosaurs at the end of each world. Before reaching this world six, I never really thought about the mons the dinosaurs as much. But if you think about Tim and what he's doing, where the princess is more of an accomplishment rather than a person, I think that the dinosaurs make a lot of sense. To me, they seem to be... Oh, this is bad. I probably waited too long. Just barely long enough. The dinosaurs seem to, in the context of an achieving accomplishment, are people who are more negative sayers, don't really know what they're talking about, or just barely. Or what else? There's something else. Here we go! So in that context, where they're thinking about the dinosaurs as those kind of people, it, it makes a lot more sense to me. Before they're just kind of like, oh, the princess isn't here, and that was all the purpose that they served. Make sure to put the ring down first. Pick it up. We're gonna have this platform come across. We saw these platforms in World 3, and we have them again in this world. I went by really quick. So brain dead right now. I'm sorry, guys. I'm gonna need to take a break after this. Grab the ring. We're gonna bring the platforms across again. But in this time, instead of trying to get up, we're gonna send the platform going across all the way under the one going up to the top there with the ladder. I love the music in this game. It's so fantastic. <laughs> I just love that with the ring it just slows down so much. It's to the point of being ridiculous. Alright. Now we're gonna get on this platform with the ladder again. And it's this switch is gonna allow for that the ladder across from us to come down. Unless with with the puzzle piece, this puzzle piece right here and the one about two doors ago that I said took me a couple hours to Maybe not a couple of hours, but an hour or two to figure out. This is probably the other one that took me a really long time to figure out. I didn't realize you could move this platform right here all the way across. And so I was trying to... Putting the ring down on the floor and it just... It never worked. Never slowed down the ladder enough. I could never get to it quick enough. It was really frustrating. But also really satisfying when I got it. That is one of the reasons why I love, I love, I love puzzle games. They're just a lot of fun when you're really thinking. They challenge you most of the time if they're done correctly. Um, yeah. Alright, let's climb up. We have another... It's hard to see, but with all the bubbles 
coming out of it. It's another platform that we are immune to time on. So with this, the ring and the key are going to fall slowly. You have to pick up both of them at the same time. Otherwise, like, unfortunately, I just messed that up. There we go. Otherwise, you won't be able to, if you drop the ring, because you're not picking, because you're trying to pick up the key, you won't be able to climb up the ladder again. Alright, and now we have the last puzzle piece for this world. Whoops. It took you so long to get here, but at long last, I can tell you that the princess must be in another castle. I've never met her. Are you sure she exists? Alright, that's it for episode... 5. <laughs> Thank you for joining me, Jackson Jules. If you like this episode, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If not, stick around. I have about two or three more episodes left of Braid before we're all done, so... Hopefully I can change your mind. Have a great day.